Okay, there was an article that I read today in the Huffington Post, and it happened right here in the state of Pennsylvania. Uh, basically, there were some people out there who, uh, somebody, I don't know, maybe people or a person that has been putting up signs in Pennsylvania uh, state parks, basically warning people uh, to be, be wary of uh, potential Bigfoot creatures. And But the funny thing about this is that these look like they were made by the actual state of Pennsylvania. They look like official, you know, uh, uh, signs that were made by Pennsylvania and hung up on trees in different spots. But anyway, we're going to read this story a little bit. Pennsylvania parks officials release curious statement about Bigfoot warnings. Parks officials in Pennsylvania say they don't know who's posting signs warning of Bigfoot activity in the area, but it's not them. They also threw cold water on the notion that Sasquatch might be making a home in the Keystone State or anywhere else for that matter. Bigfoot is not real, Wesley Robinson, press secretary for the Pennsylvania Department of Conservation and Natural Resources, told Penn Live. The signs, states, the signs state that there have been encounters in the area and call on visitors to observe elevated park etiquette, be cautious of your surroundings, and to keep the location of any small children or pets within a tighter scope of awareness. They also warn, do not approach the creature. Robinson added that the signs, which have been turning up for months in many parks, are removed whenever spotted. Visitors have been posting images of the signs on social media, including one that drew a response from the Conservation Department, which runs the state parks. The agency's claim that Bigfoot isn't real is unlikely to end the debate about the cryptid anytime soon, as searching for Sasquatch remains a popular pastime in parks around the nation. Oklahoma lawmakers even proposed a Bigfoot hunting season, complete with a cash prize, not to kill the creature, just to find evidence of it. While the majority of Bigfoot sightings seem to take place in the Pacific Northwest and California, Pennsylvania has had its share of Sasquatch activity over the years. The Bigfoot Field Researchers Organization has 124 credible sightings in Pennsylvania listed in its database, including someone who claims to have seen two and heard more of them whistling near his cabin in Harrison Valley. Now, here's what the sign says, and I, uh, I'll leave the link for this story uh, you know, in the description so you can check out what the sign looks like and uh, what it says. It's, somebody has it here on Twitter. It says, warning, due to encounters in the air, and the letterhead on the side is Pennsylvania Department of Natural Resources. You would think, I mean, if you were to see this, you would think that this was official, right, from the state of Pennsylvania, from the Department of Conservation and Natural Resources. Warning, due to encounters in the area of a creature resembling, quote, Bigfoot, end quote, we are instructing all park visitors to observe ele elevated park etiquette, be cautious of your surroundings, and to keep the location of any small children slash pets within a tighter scope of awareness. Do not approach the creature. Report any sightings to a ranger, front office, or to the DNCR office of missing persons. Do not post sightings on social media. And then it has... Uh, the same warning written in spanish so uh now i don't i haven't really talked about bigfoot too much on my show but every now and then i do and i just thought that this was i think i don't know <laughs> i don't know why somebody would do this it's a joke obviously somebody i mean spent time i mean somebody had time on their hands to actually sit down and it wasn't like the person's a bad writer either the person wrote this up made these believable looking signs and start hanging them up in state parks you know uh, why i don't know i guess for a joke or whatever but it's i you know it's funny i don't know if the person's going to get in any kind of trouble probably will probably some sort of fine if they catch the person but nonetheless i find it amusing now uh i i did meet some i mean bigfoot is one of those things um there's there's a lot less proof of Bigfoot out there than there is of UFOs. There's been a lot more sightings of UFOs, I would imagine. And, you know, and there's also a lot of physical trace evidence and things like that. But there has been some evidence of Bigfoot tracks and some film. Uh, of course, the Patterson-Gimlin film from 1967. You know, in fact, I know I, you know, some people that, uh, you know, were, were still, at least one of the subscribers I had on, on YouTube, just, you know, when I, I posted a video about the, uh, about the Patterson Gimlin footage, you know, probably within the past year, I would say, probably a year ago. I can't even remember now; it's been a while. But uh, that person didn't like that that I would talk about Bigfoot, doesn't believe big in Bigfoot at all, and decided not to subscribe to my channel anymore because of that. But uh, I just don't know. Um, I met somebody one time back in 1999 uh, 
who claimed to have seen Bigfoot, and it was a very believable story right here, actually, in Pennsylvania. I was a reporter. Of course, uh, the kind of reporter I, I am, I covered like city council and things like that, but of course, I would rather most certainly write about things about like UFOs or Bigfoot. I mean, you know, um, I'm sure you ascertained that by now. Uh, it's just the kind of guy I am. You know, I would rather do something like that rather than write about the city council uh, fiscal year budget for, you know, stuff like that. I don't like that. I mean, who's boring? But uh, Bigfoot, okay, you know, let's talk about that. But anyway, there was a, a friend of mine who told me that he had an uncle, um, and this over over the course of many years, this was probably since the 80s I was hearing this story. Uh, he said he had an uncle uh, who had seen Bigfoot the one time, and... Uh, you know, I I was always interested in hearing about this story, and and then when I, as I was a writer for a few years at this point in 1999, and uh, I was working at the in the Hazleton, Pennsylvania Standard Speaker at the time, and uh, I decided to contact. I asked, call my buddy up, and I asked him his uncle's name, and I, he said okay, and he gave it to me and the phone number, and I called this guy up, and he he wouldn't he didn't want to do it. He did not want to talk to me about this. He he was you know, and I kept on I basically kept on talking to him, and then finally talked him into it. So uh, he was reluctant, to say the least, right? And But then he decided, okay, uh, I'll do it, you know. I was like, I, you know, I, I was telling him, hey, I'm not going to make a fool out of you or anything. I'm just going to tell your story, you know, because that's I was, I was interested in the story, and I like to tell the readers. You know, I made it clear that it was this. I'm not trying to make a fool out of you or anything like that. I mean, I want to hear the story. And he told me the story. He actually took me to the place where, where it happened. It actually happened in the mid-'70s. <clears throat> and uh, he was young, a young man at the time. He had just bought a new motorcycle, and uh, he was, uh, when he got this new motorcycle, he was dying to drive it around, ride it around, but he couldn't because it was pouring rain for like a few days straight. Then finally it stopped raining, right? So he had finally got the chance to ride it around. So he actually was riding on all these back dirt roads uh, outside of Shenandoah, Pennsylvania, um, a small little town here in Pennsylvania, and uh, near a, a water reservoir. It was private property. He was riding on these dirt roads. And uh, he drove through a, a big puddle at one point and it stalled his bike out. So he's trying to kickstart the bike. And uh, then he hears footsteps coming toward him from behind, right? Come, you know, and so he's, he, the, in his mind, he was thinking, well, it's probably a ranger telling me I have no business to be driving my motorcycle in this area. So uh, he was already starting to make up an excuse in his mind. And it, so he turned around, but it wasn't a ranger. He said it was like an eight, nine foot tall beat beast basically this bigfoot he had no other explanation for it walked right across him right in front of him and across the road and, th and threw some uh, into this into this woods and just walk, kept on walking he couldn't believe what he saw said it was a bigfoot it had to be it was too big to be a person in a suit or anything like that it came out of nowhere uh and and, and he said when it was walking there was like some small trees there and the tree like you know when you walk through tall grass and the grass bends down those trees were bending down as this thing was walking through some of these smaller trees and he swear he swore by the tail. He swore by this thing. I believed the guy. I believed him. I mean, there was no reason for him to make it up. He was reluctant to tell the story in the first place. You know, I basically had to coax it out of him. And then he then he finally agreed. He took me to the spot where it happened. It was basically in the middle of nowhere. I mean, um, but it was an interesting story. And there's a lot of people like this that have these experiences that see these things. And actually, in the early 70s, actually in Pennsylvania, not, I know there was at least two cases in Pennsylvania, but there was some other places too in the 70s. I think it was particularly in the 1970s where actually there was landed spacecraft, alien spacecraft and Bigfoots at the same time. There was weird things like that were happening. And I know I talked about that in different podcasts before. So is there a connection sometimes between Bigfoot and UFOs? Maybe. It seems like at least that in some of these incidents, maybe. Not now, not in this incident that I'm talking about here, but in the same respect, uh, you know, it sounds it this to me that story sounded plausible. Uh like I believe that guy. So I I, I think that there yeah, there most certainly could be uh Bigfoot creatures running around out there. We just for whatever reason they're very elusive and we're just unable to uh get that absolute proof yet you know there, I, there's no reason i would imagine for the governments to cover that up that's not like ufos that's a whole different ball of wax uh so, so i mean it's just a matter of if they are real at some point i would imagine we'll probably get that proof i mean now 
there's been some very compelling proof. I think the Patterson Gimlin footage, I mean, there was, you know, in recent, uh, in the past year, there was a program I talked about in a different podcast. I'll leave the link for it here where uh, a History Channel show basically showed they, they really fixed, cleaned up that Patterson Gimlin footage. And I mean, it looks really convincing. It doesn't look like a guy in a suit, you know. You know, technology has showed that this, you know, looks like it's real. So... I don't know. But as far as the signs go, and I don't know why somebody would do something like that, I guess just for fun, for kicks, to see what would happen. I mean, this person's no dummy, whoever it is. I mean, they, they wrote this thing up, they thought it out, they planned it, and then they executed it. Uh, I just think it's, I think it's funny putting up fake signs like that. I mean, it, 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 wouldn't it be? I mean, we, someday we might reach a point where those signs like that might be real. Who knows? You know, but they weren't published by anybody in the state, uh, Pennsylvania State uh, Conference Conservation Department. Uh, uh, so people need to be aware of that. So if you run into any of these signs in Pennsylvania, they're not real. They're, 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 it's a ho- that is a hoax.